I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. (laughs) One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. Symbolizes just one thing to me, man. It's just a constant reminder of exactly how good God has been to me over the years. And I thank him for it, too, because I realize every day that I wake up that I would be nothing without him. That everything I am that's any good in me, I owe to him. Now, have I made some mistakes along the way? Yep. Mm-hmm. Bunches. Bunches and bunches. And will I continue to make mistakes along the way? Yep. Not as many, hopefully, as I have in the past, because a lot of stuff I know better now. But you're still going to make mistakes. Now, you know, hopefully I'll, I've limited the amount of intentional errors in my life. I've wiped quite a few of those out but from time to time because we're human we're going to make a mistake every now and then the trick with it is y'all is not to let the devil deceive you into thinking that once you make that mistake that that's it you can't do it you've fallen off the wagon you can't reboard it that's the biggest trick that he uses he makes you think that if you keep stumbling that you can't run the race um, it kind of reminds me of a marathon runner. From time to time, I watch him on TV. And you'll see some people who uh, finish the race, you know, in a, in a, in a nice uh, pace. You see people finish the race sprinting towards the finish line. But every now and then, you'll watch a marathon and you'll see a runner. And the runner is in really, really bad shape. And getting close to the finish line to the point where you see him fall and sometimes you see him crawling and you see the um, people, the aid people that work there trying to encourage him on. Now, they can't lift him up and walk him across the finish line because they'll be disqualified. But you see people staggering from side to side. I mean, wobbling really, really bad. Legs are completely shot. And you're thinking, man, I hope they make it and hang on. And a lot of times, almost every time I've seen this person or these people manage to somehow cross the finish line. And then the aid workers run in and and wrap them in the aluminum foil uh, looking uh, blanket and start trying to get some water to them and get an IV in their arm and get them in an ambulance. The key is... They finish the race. 
see, you don't get disqualified in the marathon because you stumble. You don't. They don't. They don't take your opportunity to finish the race because you keep falling. That's not the key. The key is finishing. And a lot of times, what what the devil does is he makes you think that because you keep stumbling, because you're swaying from side to side, that you know you out the race. Well, that's not the case. And see, and in this thing called life, let me help you understand something. Everybody falls. Nobody sprints to the tape in this one. Nobody just runs free and clear. There are some people running faster than you and all like this. And some people going to get to the end before you. Let them go ahead. And when the end come, the end come. I ain't in a rush to get to the end. But in this race, though, when you're stumbling and you're falling, it's a part of it. No one gets through this race without stumbling and falling, swaying from side to side. So don't let the... Uh, the enemy deceive you into thinking that it's over. I, I, I try to be encouraging to people because I don't want people to get stuck on this thing. You know, and my walk is very different from a lot of people's walks. And then I know a lot of people who walk it in faith the way I'm walking in faith. But my, my thing in the morning is just to remind those that it's not a perfect walk, man. That it's not something that's set up where you're going to be skipping through life scot-free without any pitfalls. You know, I keep saying it over and over and over again because, like I said, when I was in D.C., um, my boy Hondo said this to me, and it just kind of stuck with me, that the road to construct, the road to success is always under construction. You have to figure and count on the setbacks and the pitfalls, but it's those people that, that, uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that fight through will be the victors in the end. You cannot give up, man. Stop going somewhere and sitting down every time something goes down. It's going to go down. It's a part of it. It's going to happen. It's going to occur. There are going to be setbacks. If you go and sit down every time there's a setback, you, you that's not how this works. Please understand. It is designed that way. If success were easy, everybody would be successful. But success is just reserved for those who are willing to fight through, who refuse to settle for mediocrity, who want something more. Now, don't get me wrong. Success is defined by each individual. So what I may consider to be successful, you may not consider that. You know, what Bill Gates considers successful, I might not consider. What what Michael Jordan considers successful, I might not consider. What you consider successful, your boss might not consider. You have to define what that is for yourself. It may not be monetary at all. You know, your level of success could be tied up in community service. It could be tied up in family. It could be tied up in the church. Your level of success could be tied up in the boys clubs it could be any number of things whatever your level of success is you have to determine what that is you and the best way to determine that is to get in touch with your maker who created you to find out what your mission and your purpose is so he can put you on track i just had this conversation with my son and we were talking about getting on the path that god has set up for you So many times we find ourselves fighting through life because of so much uncertainty, because we have no idea where we're headed. It's like uh, one of my um, sayings that I have at my mentoring camp for boys is, is that a boy without a male role model is like an explorer without a map. See, if you don't have a map, laid out in front of you of where you're going. When you wake up every day, that pretty much explains the feeling of confusion, the lackadaisical attitude, the the lack of purpose, the not understanding your mission because you don't have not gotten in touch with your creator to find out exactly what your path in life is 
What are you supposed to be doing? The moment you can identify that is the moment that you get started waking up with purpose, with the sense of direction, when you kill the sense of I don't know what's next or what to do. Now, there's going to be some confusing moments no matter what happens. There's going to be some uncertainty, but at least you'll know where you're going. So if you're tired of waking up feeling lost, abandoned, confused, don't know what to do, don't know what you're supposed to be doing, refer back to your maker. Because when he created you, he had a plan for you. When he created you, he had a path for you. Now, we've made some decisions to get off of both of those, the mission and the path, but God can get you right back on track. Do that today. Talk to him about it. Ask him what you're supposed to be doing. And listen, God has all the answers if you form the relationship, okay? All right, let's go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Harvey Morning Show is on, on the radio, on yeah, yeah, the radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Why does he get in the opening? <laughs> and I haven't even introduced you all. You don't have to know my name. I start <laughs> with Shirley Strawberry. Mommy, mommy! <laughs> Hello, Steve. Then How are you, darling? I move along to Carla for real. Thank you, darling. Good morning. How are you, Steve? And then <laughs> I move on to Junior. Morning, up! You're listening. <laughs> And here's the only place you should come in. <laughs> I want to thank he you. He is the big to man from across the land. He was on the other radio show. But he saw it all began to crumble (laughs) right in front of of his very eyes. Jeffrey Brown. You are telling, telling, telling the truth. And finally, <laughs> the oldest fool in here, he has the number one show on all this year. Right now. Oh, <laughs> and so, this is the ignorant <laughs> nephew. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. See how his voice changed when you give him that type of intro? That was great. That was great. More sexy, ain't it? You had that Danny boy in there, man. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know where that came from. You just put Danny boy in there from nowhere. I don't know where that came from. So, Tommy, what happened yesterday? You weren't here. Wow. Hmm. Damn, that. we, that's a pop team from the top. Damn. Uh, I mean, well, I think so I now did. you see where it come from, nephew. Uh, now. Nah. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Carla. I it, see. It, yeah, was it did. ever a question? <laughs> yes, yeah, it was. So, yes, so, he was questioning. Yeah, uh-huh, who was yeah, he questioning? Yeah. Oh, just you know who started the most stuff on the show. Yeah, yeah he already knew about it you. Was me. Oh well, uh, you know evidently what? You he know didn't. When we come he back, I guess we'll... you brought it up, Carla. He didn't wasn't asking. Mm, all right, oh, we're asked. trying to drag Carla back in it. Uh-uh. She put herself in it. She said he nothing. put us in it. Well, we about to find out why his ass wasn't here. When exactly. We come back. Okay. And that's what it was. My ass. But we'll be back. <laughs> it's always the black. All right, thirty-two after the hour. That's when Damn we'll be back. That right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
<laughs> All right, uh, listen. <laughs> listen. Here we like are. Listen. Yeah. Listen, Linda. Linda listen. We're back. Before we went to break, we were at, or I was asking Tommy. Let's be clear. I was asking Tommy you where was he because okay. he didn't. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. I yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't me. get sidetracked. Everybody yeah, if I heard, heard you. Yeah. Then you know, yeah. uh, Tommy. Tommy went to the doctor yesterday. And oh, that's got good. Consultation for my colonoscopy, which will be next week. Now you ain't so. got to go to no doctor to talk about it. I could have told you what it was. <laughs> what you done took a damn day off for going to sit down and somebody tell you and what they finna do that they gonna do anyway. <laughs> you got to take you a whole go day with them to first. tell you they gonna look in your back. <laughs> a whole day. <laughs> hey, 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 Jay. Well, yeah. My butt is yeah, not gonna yeah. be this second. <laughs> well, well let me tell you something now. You do know the day before you got to empty out. I heard. <laughs> you got to do They're going to give you, you got to drink a gallon. You got to drink a gallon of this solution. Is it yucky? Yo, well, it taste it good. What, what can you that's drink you that's going to wash your entire cold mouth <laughs> in a day <laughs> that you think might be delicious? <laughs> Yes. Well, let me tell you something. Go with a meal. <laughs> Not a Sprite. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. You're going to drink this all day. You got to start at 8 uh, in the morning. I ain't yeah. ready for that. I think you finish at 8 at night or something, but uh, all, you can't eat nothing. Yeah. Ain't no crackers, no nothing. Mm-mm, you just got to drink this solution. And just like, like sometimes you have to drink like a quarter of it at a time. Yeah. But you got to drink it within, you take out so many minutes for you to drink this quart of you want me to tell you what Correct. it tastes like? Yeah. Oh, Go please. Ahead. I love your descriptions. Please. Oh, uh, yeah. Pus. Pus. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. man. Come on. No, it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be. But then time it. Now, after about 8 o'clock, now around 2 o'clock. Oh, God, Steve. What day? Oh, that was Monday. So, Sunday to 2 o'clock. Oh, what, what day are you getting it done on, Tommy? The 12th, which is a Oh, that's Wednesday. a Wednesday. Right. Oh, two, so you ain't going to be here Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, you ain't going to be yes, here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. No, you're not. No, you're not. You weren't here you yesterday, right and it was just a consultation. Hell, yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you going to consider yeah. this surgery. <laughs> after, that, <laughs> after that doctor told you what he was going to do, you needed a whole day to hug. <laughs> but, Tommy, apl- we applaud you, though, for going and taking care of your health, though. That's a good thing. Hey, That's I don't, a good I don't, I don't like being old under. now. That's what's yeah, bothering me. I don't like being under. You have one, right, Steve? You have one. Well, hold on. Marge, you with you. I did, did one. Yeah, ain't that, you, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You ain't got to go under. Try to stay <laughs> right. <laughs> Take it like a man. Yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Open your eyes. Be alert. I tell you what, don't go under. <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> bet your ass will go under eventually. <laughs> I can promise you. Because when they push that camera up in your crack, <laughs> your ass, you got about four seconds to pass out. <laughs> and you realize they still pushing it? Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Thank you for taking care of your health, though. Push it further. Right. They are foot oh. in. Oh, Lord. Stop it, Steve. Oh, foot in. They tore the half feet. You're you got scaring three feet him, of camera Steve. in your butt. Ah! Stop it, ah! So, no, <laughs> don't so go under. <laughs> and can I tape it? <laughs> you <ain't me. laughs> Yeah, so prepare yeah. to be off next I don't, Tuesday. I don't like uh, going on Wednesday. <laughs> tell you what, uh, don't. Yeah, who does? Who <laughs> likes I'm don't. telling you, nobody does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm getting mine next week, too, Tommy. I'm getting it done, man. Good. It, that's a job, good man. thing. You should take yeah. care of your health. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Man, you they gonna find all kind of kind of polyps on your ass. <laughs> oh, Tommy? Hell yeah. Oh, he didn't drink. They need to go in there. They gonna need a power wash this colon. <laughs> Hold on, before we can finish sticking up. Somebody stick a power washer oh, nozzle up in there. Oh, they gonna need a sandblaster to go up in there. Oh god. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh. Oh, oh, we're making oh, light of it, but the, the the message here is to take we'll care of you. your health, yeah. okay? We got, we got yeah. that shit. <laughs> we got that cancer shirt. awareness. That's all of that. God, yeah. but, oh, they going to stick with it. <laughs> Whatever. Oh. 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 This is what, now, he up, though. He ain't under. <laughs> <laughs> talking about he going to be up. No, you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got this I didn't camera. say I was going to be up. I said I don't like to be under. Uh, I just said you ain't got to. 
<laughs> what? You ain't got to stay up. This no, don't <laughs> tell him that. Experience it all. Once they get that camera, you got to co co Coca-Cola knock or come knock. <laughs> Boy, I don't know how much of that camera they're going to have to put in you before you wish How long does dead. it last? I mean, I mean, hours, I mean it's hours. Hours. But it's it's a good procedure, man, because yeah. it's painless yeah. if you go if and you go, go under. under. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they finish, you're going to be real ginger back there. Real. <laughs> you're going to well, have, to, ginger. You're gonna have to pat that area. You're gonna well, let me tell you something. Hey. You're going to know, you know something happened to you. you. You might not be able to put your finger on it. No pun intended. You're but you're going to know something. You're going to know something happened to your ass. I can tell oh, you that, man. especially oh, when you get up and go home. Uh, that first sneeze. walk, that first, <laughs> yeah, that first sneeze. Would that first uh, sneeze come out? Or sneeze cough? Oh, uh, cough! Uh, he's a sneezer. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Father God! Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you laugh real hard. <laughs> 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 and, and and fix the shocks on your car on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I got another one for you, Tommy. You gonna go back to eating when you get home, and tomorrow when you you first put the first load back out, oh my God. it's gonna be way easier than it's ever been. <laughs> okay, enough already. We get oh it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> Stay away but from you peanut to. brittle. You got to. All right? Stay away from <laughs> peanut brittle. You finna get a lot of paper cuts. <laughs> All right, listen. Oh, um, co- oh. Coming up next, the man of the moment right here. Nephew Tommy is coming up with Run That Prank Back right after this. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, my ass is on the line. <laughs> oh, You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Grammy nominations have been postponed until Friday, and Eddie Murphy, Steve, has more than you. OMG, he's welcomed his 10th child into the world. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Got 10 child money. Congratulations, yeah. Nephew Tommy is here right now, though, with Run That Prank Back. Nephew, Yo, Christmas decoration. Oh, I did it just like that. Hello? I'm trying to reach Cecil. Yeah, this Cecil, what's going on? Hey, uh, this Manny, man. I live like about four or five streets over from you. This Manny, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, uh, I see you, you You got your Christmas lights up, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I got them up. I got my whole little theme and everything set up, man. It, it's looking real good. Okay, let me, let me ask you something, man. The theme you got in your yard, where you get that idea from? What you mean, where I get them from? The idea, like you got a snowman, you got Santa Claus, some reindeers, you got your whole house decorated, you got Jesus with the manger and, and the uh, the wise men around him. Where did you get your idea from? I'm 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 lost. What you talking about, man? You you asking me where I got a thing from? I mean, you you trying to imply something? I'm I'm, ask, I mean, I'm asking you a question. Where did you get the idea from? I made this up. I made this up. Jesus, Jesus, and the manger, you know, that represents Christmas, man. You go with a theme that's Christmas-based, man, and that's that's Christmas-based. Jesus is Christmas. Jesus in, in, in Jerusalem and in, in Bethlehem. And, hey, what, what's what's going on, man? I, I, who are you? Where you get my number from, anyway? I'm, I'm, I'm Manny, man. I'm Manny. I got, I got your number from one of the people that live on your street. And I'm just asking you, uh, on the real, where you get this idea from? I made this idea. I made this up, man. I made this up. This is the second time you asked me where I get this idea from. What are you trying to imply? Okay, here, here go the real deal, dog. The same theme you got if you come four streets over, I got the same thing in my yard, and it looked like you done stole my idea. And see, what, what you ain't going to do is try to win Christmas yard of the season, and you done stole my idea. That's the problem I got with you. No, the problem you got is life and twisted. Okay, cause see, I put this together without I, I I never even heard of you, Manny, to begin with. Secondly, I've been doing this particular theme in my yard since I've been staying over. I've been staying over here six years. You ain't had that. You ain't had that theme last year. You ain't had that. I last had year. this theme last year and the year before, and I put my stuff in the same place every damn time I put it down. You did not have this last year. First of all, who are you to call me and tell me about my theme and about my yard and what you got going? I know you ain't copying me. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you right now. And I ain't finna go no further. 
You need to rearrange your theme and get a different theme because you got the same theme I got. No, you need to rearrange your okay? Because I ain't rearranging Jack over here. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Let's get that if I got to come over there, I, let me tell you something, man, years. and I'm being real, as real as I can be with you. If I got to come over there and unplug. If you got to what? Come what? If I got to come over to your house and unplug some stuff. Unplug? No, no, no. See, if anything, my foot will be getting unplugged from your First of all, you ain't finna come on my street in my house and disrespect me at all about anything that I got set up in my yard. Secondly, I ain't hey, finna hey, let it go around that way. I tell you what, then I'm just gonna do this here. I'm finna just come over there and, and take Jesus and take the oh, and, and, and no, take them no. wise men out your yard. That's what I'm finna do. You come over this way talking about messing with Jesus and the manger? It's gonna be some real problems. Cause first of all, that's fake. Secondly, that's that's the center of the thing. Now, if you want to come over here and you want to try to do something like that, you go going to need Jesus to help you because there's going to be some rolling around going hey man, on. You hey trying man, to come hey up to my yard with the The bottom line is this right here. You got the nerve to do the same theme I got. I'm four streets over. I'm driving through looking at everybody's, hey man, uh, here, man. looking at everybody's like, theme. Like you the here, only one that copied years, my right? theme. The same way, the same place, every dog on you. Ain't nobody ever told me. Your stuff look like Manny from four, five, six. Who the hell is Manny any way? Manny ain't got no right coming on my street because you don't stay on this street. You going around looking at people still trying to get your ideas, man. You not original. No, no, I'm, I'm very original. I moved to this neighborhood before you did. I've been here. I've been here 10 years. You've been here about six. How, how long you been living over here? I've been living over here six years. This subdivision was just coming up when I came over here. How you going to tell me you've been running your team longer than I've been running mine? Who are you crazy? Hey, man. Hey man, man I ain't got, at, I ain't I ain't got time to go back man. You know what? I got better things to do. I still got some more lights put up. Hey, I got you know a what? I ain't going to go back and team. forth. What I'm finna tell you is just right here. I'm finna come take Jesus off your yard. I'm finna no, take Jesus no. in the wild. You can't take Jesus out of my yard. Now, see, now you're sounding like one of them crazy people. You talking about taking Jesus out of my life? That's where you got life and messed up. Come on over here. I got something hey, to man. Hey, man. Look do. here. Don't turn your lights on tonight. No, my lights going to be on tonight, tomorrow night, and every other night. I'm talking about taking my Jesus in the manger. I'm original as original can be. Come over here if you want to. I got something for you, you man. You, you done stole my idea. And, you and still what talking you... about this stealing ideas? Come on around here and let's settle okay. this. Hey, hey, dog, dog. Let me tell you something right now. Jesus and them wise men is coming out your yard today. No. You know what, man? I'm through with you, man. I'm through with you. You know what? Come over here if you want to. Touch my baby Jesus. Touch my manger. Touch Mary and Joseph and the wise men. And I'm going to put the North Star over your Literally. Hey, man. Hey. I don't know where you get my number from. And who are you anyway? Who is it? Who are you, man? I tell you what. You talking about coming over here, messing with anything in my yard? My is on time, okay? Set to go off every evening at dusk. As soon as it starts getting dark, my going off. Let my not come on tonight. It's going to be some for your Hey, hey, hey dog. Anyway? Why, 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 why you can't come up with your own theme, man? Why you I can't do my your own thing? Own Look here, I tell you what, man. Who the f- are you anyway? We just squat this f- right f- out. You stay four, five, three, four. What kind of car you got in your driveway? I'll come find you, little f- Come deal with you right now. Where you at? Hey, 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 hey dog, dog, dog. Right dog. now. Where you at? Uh, uh, you know what? Don't worry about where I'm at. I'm going to be there when your I'm lights come on tonight. Just- now, I'm going to come find you. No, your lights ain't coming on tonight. What? No, not come on tonight. There's going to be some problems in your life. It's going to be hard to breathe for you. I'm going to let you know this. Hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. Right. First who of all. You, who the f- are you anyway, man? You done called me out of the blue telling me that you're going to come disconnect my life and steal my major and take my baby Jesus out the man. Hey, yo, who are you? You sitting up here accusing me of stealing your thing? When it's been my thing for all these years, six years I've been doing this, and I don't want best yard three years or three years running in this season? No, I think you trying to get my... But, but, but see, the problem is you don't want best yard because you're stealing my idea. How can I be stealing your... Man, you, man. You know what? you and your... And I'm ready to deal with your... Right Hey, hey, hey dog, dog. I, I, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. You stole my Jesus theme, dog. Hold on, wait a minute. How can I have won best yard three years running and you saying I got the thing from you? You should have been getting it. You must not be doing it. Okay, right. let, let me let me let me let me go on and say this to you right now, dog. Well, let say me, this. What? Larry on your street told me to call you. Larry. Larry gave you my number. Larry and Tommy told me to call you. Larry and Tommy told you to call me. Do you know who Tommy is? My, not, Larry ain't Larry ain't never missing no name Tommy to me. Who the I'm Tommy. I'm nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Nephew, you just got pranked by your boy Larry, man. Nephew Tommy. From the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> you Larry.
Larry did this shit. Larry me. told me to call you. He said you win every single yeah, year. Just, the Christmas it's, yard it's, of the year, man. I'm still, but it's kind of funny now. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, uh-huh. Let me ask you something. What's the baddest radio show in the land? Oh, man, hands down, no doubt. <laughs> Steve Harvey. <laughs> Morning show with nephew father. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas decoration. <laughs> yeah, Merry <It> Christmas. <laughs> All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up at the top of the hour, Grammy nominations have been postponed, and Eddie Murphy welcomes another baby. We'll talk about it. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The Recording Academy has delayed its Grammy nominations announcements from Wednesday until Friday. The switch comes because CBS This Morning will be covering the funeral of President George H.W. Bush. Uh, they'll now be announced. Huh? Were you saying, Steve? What? Was, well, you were just asking why. Going, why? Oh, yeah. oh, and then you, yes, oh. <laughs> and I feel, yes. Yeah. The, the uh, Grammy nominations will now be announced at 8.30 a.m. on Friday, okay? Uh, yes, in, uh, they the might as well push it back. It. Tommy, you, you up for one this year? No, not, not, yeah. not, not this Grammy? year. Jay, you up for one? Yes, I have several. <laughs> come on, come on, Jay. Come on, for for your hit. murder the hits, that's the right. The hits, baby. You yeah, should no, be yeah. for sure. They don't have a prank call. You know what I want to say? I want to see. You remember the the rap group that won for Hustle and Flow? Uh, three, <laughs> three, six, six mafia. mafia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would love to see the shape that they Oscar is in. <laughs> I want a picture of where it is and what it looks like. They were like. carrying it around in that paper bag to yeah. parties and, and clubs. Stuff. Yeah. That's why I want to see what mm-hmm. they Oscar look like. <laughs> <laughs> what they do with it, huh? Yeah, where is it? And can I see an actual picture? And where are they, more importantly? Where are they? Mm-mm, don't worry about it. I know where they were. I knew what was going to happen with them. But I need the statue, though. You need to see yeah. this statue. You ain't finna be surprised by where they at. This <laughs> right. that damn statue. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Congratulations to Eddie Murphy. He has welcomed his 10th child into the world. His fiance Paige Butcher, uh, gave birth to their second child together on November 30th. The baby boy, his name is Max Charles Murphy. Oh, he got a... Oh, weighed cool. 6 pounds, 11 ounces, and measured 19 inches long. Eddie's rep says both mother and son are doing well. Max joins big sister Izzy Una. Uh, Eddie's other children are Eric, Bella Zara, Zola Ivy, Shane Audra, Bria, and Miles Mitchell, ranging I'm, in ages I'm gonna tell you from 29 something, to 25. I'm going to tell you something. Eight, uh, 16 to 25. I've been nine. around him a couple of times with his kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That dude right there, man, is an excellent father. Eddie That's Murphy good. is a great father. And you want to know if a father's really good? Listen to the way their children talk about him. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I watched his son talk about his father, man. I said, wow, this is a dude that put some time in. Because his son was right on point. You know, the ones he had with Nicole, them kids right there, man. Them, them some great kids. And the, uh, the other kids, I know, I know all of them. I saw the one, the Izzy, uh, is it a, the latest one? Is he Una? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. She's two. Uh-huh. Lord, his house. Lord. Is it <laughs> Lord. Is it really Lord? You moved on <laughs> from the kids. For you to be to saying house. that. You had a moment, huh, Steve? Uh, no, man, <laughs> when you walked in, look what you say. Just what I just said. Hell, I got to go get some more money. <laughs> <laughs> it is unbelievable. I said, I have got to go get some more money, man. In LA, to have a house like that, it's unbelievable. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm really telling you, man. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful home. Beautiful home. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, well, congratulations again to Eddie Murphy, yeah. child number 10. Mm-hmm. And for being a great father, too, man. Yeah, and for being a great father. You know, yeah. look, all our kids make mistakes. We, we, if you got kids, your, mm-hmm. your kids are going to make a mistake. Your kids going to do something to embarrass your ass. Woo. Just and know that. <laughs> And hurt you. And sometimes they're going to hurt you. Right. You're right. All right, Steve, it's time for today's headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, and good morning. This is Ann Tripp with the news. Former President George Herbert Walker Bush eulogized yesterday evening during a ceremony at the U.S. Capitol. 
The 41st president's body was brought to Washington earlier in the day. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was among the many who paid tribute. Today, this hero has returned to the Capitol a final time, not on the front porch of our democracy this time, but here in its hallowed cathedral, beneath paintings that tell the story of our land and our liberty. President Bush will lie in state at the Capitol building until Wednesday when he's to be moved to the Washington National Cathedral for a state funeral. By the way, President Trump has declared Wednesday a national day of mourning, so mail, no mail delivery. Uh, the uh, stock exchanges are closed and everything. By the way, the president and Mrs. Trump uh, did stop by the rotunda last night to pay their respects to the former president and the first of President Bush is to be buried on Thursday at his presidential library in College Station, Texas. President Trump, by the way, calling his trade truce with China a huge win, even though not many details have been released. The White House does say that a 90-day time period begins January 1st for China to either address U.S. complaints or face the threat of higher tariffs. President Trump got together with Chinese President Xi Jinping at last week's G20 summit in Buenos Aires. Two Minneapolis cops are on paid leave for putting up what even the city's mayor says was a racist-themed Christmas tree in their precinct. The precinct was the fourth precinct in the city located in a mostly black area. And the cops in question, they say, decorated the tree with malt liquor cans, a Popeye's store cup, two packs of cigarettes, a crime scene tape, stuff like that. And they thought, I guess, that was hilarious. The mayor didn't find it hilarious. The local city councilman thought it was disgusting as well. The mayor wanted both men fired on the spot, but he now realized that he has to go through an official process, but he says he wants them out. Cops in Baltimore are looking for two people who say they ran a deadly scam on a 54-year-old woman who just tried to help. Authorities say Jacqueline Smith was driving along a local street early Saturday morning when she saw a woman carrying what looked like a baby and a sign, help me with my child. Cops say she pulled over to give the young woman some change, and then a man appeared out of nowhere, tried to pull her handbag out of the car, and because she resisted, he fatally stabbed her in the chest. As I said, the two scammers got away. Three anonymous Harvard students, a Harvard sorority and four national fraternities and sororities suing the Ivy League University over its recent decision to bar any members of single-sex organizations from assuming leadership positions at Harvard. The Greek letter groups say the new rule amounts to threats and intimidation designed to scare students from joining uh, fraternities and sororities and things like that. Harvard administrates that they issued the new rule in an attempt to curb sexual assaults at fraternity and sorority parties. And today is National Cookie Day. Cookies! <laughs> now that back to the news <laughs> and the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The Kansas City Chiefs won their game Sunday without star running back Kareem Hunt, Steve. Uh, you know this, of course, something they'll need to keep doing for the rest of the season as he remains on the commissioner's exempt list following the re- release of a video. Does anybody know what the commissioner's exempt list is exactly? It's just a list for players that can't play. Yeah, playing. They don't play. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the team acted swiftly upon seeing the video and released uh, Hunt. That It was a video showing Hunt brutally assaulting a woman earlier this year. Uh, they released Hunt, and, uh, who was one of the league's top rushers, huh? Yeah. Now, ladies, you all saw the video. Yeah, yeah. Just your yes. opinion of the video. Do you think he should... Uh, never be able to play in the NFL again. Yeah. 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 He he should be Because he had an opportunity yeah. to walk away. He should have just left and walked away. It wasn't necessary for him to go back and do what he did. Yeah. Do you and think then he lied about it, and you, you put your whole career on the line by doing but this. But let me you ask you something. smarter than that. Uh-huh. Would the video been, it was, look, first of all, let me say this. I disagree with every aspect of the video. Okay, good. Because I'm just about, you can't put your hands on a woman. Absolutely not. Now, what she said to you and all that, we may not all be privy to, and you can have your story and she can have your. But at the end of the day, if you just live by that rule right there, it would have just had you in a better spot. Wasn't nobody kicking or hitting nobody at first. That's why you can't let it get to that. Would it have been easier for you ladies had it just been the initial pushing that we saw in the beginning of the video or did the walk over and kick her? Oh. That's what did it. That's and what did he it. He kicked her so hard. Yeah, it was, it was just, just so yeah. harsh and mean, mean and unnecessary. You gotta, you gotta defuse the situation and take yourself out of that. You gotta be smart 
in situations That's like that. And if anything in the NFL, if anybody needs to learn, they all of these young players have to learn from Ray Rice. And yeah, it's like this ha- this has happened before. You know, this has happened before with the Ray See, Rice the situation. Part with the girl it's, it's was she got thrown across the lobby and her head. Hit that yeah, wall, wall between the wall. elevator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and when she, she stood up, too, she dog. was visibly groggy. And then when she squat down to try to gather herself, yeah. when dude yeah. went over there and kicked it in, I went, dog, yeah. they might would have talked to you if you was just pushing in the hallway, which is wrong, because oh, all that just keep going somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And Steve, he was the star running back. Sure, you, th- you ain't got to tell you me. You threw all no, that away. That. No, I'm, but I'm just saying, you throw all that your whole career away. Emotions. Come on, I, I just yeah, this is crazy behavior. Yeah. All right, coming up next at 34 after the hour, nephew Tommy. Uh, wow, nephew, you had a touching moment about your dad and being a good husband on your uh, show, Ready to Love. We'll talk about that when we come back at 34 after the hour. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, so Steve, Mm -hmm. you should be very proud of your your nephew because this past Saturday... I am sometimes. Tommy, (laughs) check this out though, Steve. Tommy talked to the male contestants on his dating show, uh, Ready to Love, which is on OWN, of course, on Saturday nights. He talked to the contestants about his dad... Uh, and about being a good husband. They call him the OG, and they were, like, you know, sitting around getting some advice from the OG, nephew Tommy. Mm-hmm. Take a listen. I know there's been times out of your marriage and your relationship that you came to a point where it's like, well, damn, can I deal with this You know what I can tell you on that is is I had a, a father that never left my mom, never did nothing negative to my mom. My daddy left here three years ago. He tired of it. Was with my mama to the end to the end. So that's all I know. I ain't going nowhere. Steve. I'm to the end because I grew up like that. Mm-hmm. I grew up with a, 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 a father in my house who was real. And I didn't know nothing about leaving or going nowhere else. We had hard times. We had issues, bills, this and that. So I don't know nothing else. I said, I'm forever. All right, nephew. All right, nephew. Yeah. Damn, wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you impressed me. I told you it was going to make you proud. <laughs> to the end. To the end. I damn knew. Why you was talking about damn new one. <laughs> it was good. Damn. Yeah. It was good. And they were listening. You had a captive audience, Tommy. Yeah, mm-hmm. It was See, good. Man, I caught else. your ass. You got out there by yourself. Like, I'd have done that before. Be talking next thing you know, your ass up in it. I was in it, man. Hey, man, this show ain't about you, Steve. I was out. I'm trying to get out of it. (laughs) But it helped the guys, though. It it helped the guys uh, as far as commitment. They were, you know, having some concerns about commitment and who should they pick and things like that. And so after they talked to Nephew, Tommy, because I saw the show and it was really good. After they saw Mm -hmm. Nephew, then they kind of, you know, relaxed and went had a different attitude when they went and and had their dates with the women that they were, um, you know, taking out for that night. Can I just go on and say it? What? Yes, sir. What, Steve? Okay, if no one had told you you was fitting to do a clip of Tommy's show, would you to believe that was Tommy? <laughs> Why? Uh, I mean, it was so damn intelligent and moving. Really? I went, yeah. 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 I got a I, light tear in my eye. You want to hear it again? Do you, I didn't hear none of that, you know, uh, Team Tommy. I didn't hear none of that. I heard I people in the room up, going, man, damn. It was great. Man, he teared up. <laughs> Team Tommy teared up. Yeah. Wait, let's, oh, man, let's hear it man. again. Let's, maybe it wasn't Tommy. Let's hear it again. I know there's been times out of your marriage and your relationship that you came to a point where it's like, well, damn, can I deal with this? You know what I can tell you on that is is I had a, a father that never left my mom, never did nothing negative to my mom. My daddy left here three years ago. He tired of it. Was with my mama to the end. To the end. So that's all I know. I ain't going nowhere. Steve. I'm to the end because I grew up like that. Mm-hmm. I grew up with a, 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 a father in my house who was real. And I didn't know nothing about leaving or going nowhere else. We had hard times. We had issues, bills, this and that. So I don't know nothing else. I said, I'm forever. Yeah. <laughs> That was him. Yeah, that was great. No, that's it. That that ain't him. That's it. I heard it. I heard it. everybody's deep. No, that's it. 
Now, I'll tell you right now, that ain't him. I heard it. I've been rounding the whole time he's been on this earth. That is not my damn nephew. That's not your nephew. Now, I don't know who y'all got to do this part right here. I don't know who you dubbed his voice and fix his brain and all this here, but that is not my nephew. I'm calling my sister. I need to tape this into my sister. <laughs> Steve, there's video. It's Tommy. Yeah, look, hey, 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 on up to date now. They current. <laughs> they got technology. <laughs> great job, oh, Tommy. Man. Great, great Tell advice. You right. as well. I don't know Hell, nothing else. Hell, that's Tommy. <laughs> I don't know nothing else. That boy said, I don't know nothing else. Sound like a line from a movie. Yeah. I don't know nothing else. Hell yeah, you know what it is. Color purple. I don't know nothing else. My daddy left up out of here three years ago. I don't know nothing else. Don't ask me nothing else. Man. I prank, can't say nothing else. Prank phone call coming up with the nephew right after this. I ain't seen nobody going out that back door. What is oh, God. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Hang on to your seats for this one. Subject, my girlfriend's husband's baby. Yeah, what? yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But right I now... No nothing else. <laughs> right, <laughs> right now, nephew Tommy uh, is here with today's prank, prank phone call. What you got, Neff? Hey, Shirley, it's football season. Tailgaters. Oh. That's the name of it, Tailgaters. Hello? Man, I speak to T-Rock. Speaking. Who's this? Is this T-Rock? Yeah. Go ahead. What's up? Hey, man, let me ask you something. All last year, y'all was uh, uh, tailgating here in the parking lot at the apartments. Are y'all doing that again this year? Yeah, always. That's what we do. Hey, man, hey, listen, man. I just moved here about a year ago. Let me tell you something. All that noise and shit y'all be making down there, man. Oh, wait, y'all need to go to the. Y'all need to get y'all some money oh, and buy some tickets and go to the on. game, man. Hold on, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, I don't know who the f- you are. My thing is, hey, we do what we do out here, man. We all get together. Brothers go to work, man. At the end of the week, we want we want to get together and throw a little barbecue, whatever. That's what we do. Don't be calling with that okay. f- dude. Oh, so man, who are you anyway? Y'all, y'all making too much well, noise in the Who are you? I live, I live here in the, in the apartments too, man. Y'all, y'all making okay, too much. I tell you what, I tell you, we should want to talk all that noise about what we doing out here, man. I tell you, bring your bunch of down here and say it to my face. Who are you? Hey, man, don't don't worry about who I am. Man, I still live here. Hold on a second, hey. man. First, man, see, I'm trying to have a good day, and I'm going to hear some like this here. Come on, man. Who, who are you supposed to be, man? I'm T-Rock, dog. I come down here. We do what we do. We all get together. We try to have a good time with it. And you want to come with this? You want to try to mess my day up? Man, you must be gone with that dude. Come on, man. No, nah, man. You, you done f*** me off. All that noise, man, disturbing people while they in their apartment. Come on, man. But I say, look here. I'm, I'm putting it down like this. At the end of the week, man, brothers get together, put our money together, man. And we get together and we try to have a good time. If you want to come down and join us, man, you more than welcome. I'm trying to tell you more than welcome, bro. Come down and grab a plate, man. But, man, please, don't try to mess my day up, though, Doc. Please don't, man. Please. Hey, man, I'm trying to, y'all messing my day up with all that damn noise, oh, man. man. Come on, man, look. This is what we do. You want to join, you can join. If you ain't going to join, shut the hell up. Hey, man. Let me do what you're going to do, but let, let us do what we do. This is what we do on the weekend. This is how we have, we leave our stress. Brothers try to do something, get together, and have a good time. And you want to try to mess that up? Man, go that hey, man. Man. Oh. All I'm saying is, man, if y'all tailgating, won't y'all carry y'all down to the stadium, man, and watch the damn Cowboys play? We can't Let's go down do there, that. man. We don't want to go down there. We want to get together where we are right. This is what we do, man. This is what we do. Ain't nobody ever complain now one time. Now one time. You're the first person to ever complain. We've been doing this for three years. It's the first time we ever had a complaint. You don't, you don't drive your mother down and off. Why, 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 why y'all don't buy y'all some tickets to the damn game, man? For what? Why don't y'all go, go to the game? Why the game have to be in my my parking lot? Well, I tell you like this, man. We can't afford a, a ticket, man. So we do. We just get together. We do what we can. We put our money together. We get together. And that's what we do. Again, like I said earlier, man, you more than welcome to come down. But you want to bring this old monkey <laughs> down here? Go on, man. Go on with that, Doc. Go on with that, man. If you ain't no cowboy fan, move around. Hey, move man, around. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this right here, man. If y'all fire up that pit on Sunday, I'm coming down there and turning that Joe. Don't turn who up, what over? You don't turn what over? I'm turning y'all, y'all fire that pit up, and I promise you, I'm going to turn that damn barbecue pit over. And I promise you'll be standing at the top of the church. You will be standing at the top of the church. As soon as that meat gets the flow, 
you gonna hit the flow. Hey, hey man, you gonna hit the flow. Don't, don't don't fire that pit up Sunday. You hear me? Do not fire that. Pit. I tell you, it's gonna be. Matter of fact, I'm looking for the pit now. I'm looking for it now. It's gonna be out there. It's gonna be out there. Okay. Okay. Bring your muscle down. I, 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 I told you that you're disturbing people and you're disturbing me more than anything. You know, and y'all did yeah, yeah, it all last year. All last year, y'all tailgated right here in the damn apartments, man. That's crazy. You know what, dude? I would apologize to you, but let me say it like this here, man. You don't f- y'all. I don't say you. You come down and get a plate. You come down and join us. You know, we just getting together, trying to make it a family down here. And just what you want to bring to me, man. You don't f- me off the house. I'm on that other level now. I'm on that other level. Okay. Believe well, that. I'm, I'm on my meat the flow. I was on the other level midway through the season last year with all that damn noise, man. Man, oh my God, man. Look, let me tell you something. My meat hit the flow. Or somebody come by here and disturb us. What we do, what we do. It's gonna go down. I'm gonna tell you like that. We ain't trying to have no. We ain't trying to have no problems. We don't get down like that. We just trying to have a good time. That's all we do. We've been doing this for three years. We got the kids out here playing. We got the big screen out for everybody to watch the game. You know, I extended my some love out to you to come out and have a play with them. But you're going to talk about coming and knocking my meat over? As hard as I work, I promise you, if that my meat touch the ground, you're going to touch the ground. Come on, man. Don't go there with that, man. Hey, don't do that. Okay, look here, man. I'm telling you right now, dog. As soon as I smell that barbecue pit, as soon as I smell them charcoal, I promise you I'm turning that shit off. Y'all ain't doing this this year, man. Y'all ain't doing it this year. Who are you, man? Who are you? I'm, I'm the, where, where, where you live, Doc? Where you live? Why don't you present yourself to me, man? Why don't you do that? You, you know what, man? You can meet me at the, at the, at the lease and all. Come on, I'm at the lease. I will start walking right now to the lease off right now. So I, I see who the hell I'm talking to. You, you, need, you, need, you need, This is man. This is Okay, well, you need to see who's going to turn this pit over. Y'all ain't doing okay, this yeah. year, man. I want to see that. I want to see that happen. Because soon as, soon as you touch my pit, before that meat hit the floor, you're going to hit the floor quicker than the meat will. I'm trying to have a good time. You know, black people trying to get together, man. Everybody come and drink his beer. Nobody saying nothing. But all of a sudden, get your monkey will come out this Okay, I'll tell you what. Bring your what? to the leasing office, and I promise you. I'm finna, I'm finna head to the, I'm finna head. You need, you need to bring somebody with you. That's what you need to do. Okay, I'm a, I tell you what I'm gonna bring with me. I got two people to bring with me. It's gonna be me, myself, and I. And I bet you this here, you won't put no meat on that grill come Sunday. Okay. You won't put no All meat right. on that grill. The hell with you and them damn cowboys, man. You don't talk about the cowboys me like that, Doc. Now you really f- me off. We all cowboy fans. You gonna okay. meet me at the leasing office, it's on. I'm gonna beat your and they gonna put a Tony Romo shirt on your. I promise you, you gonna be a you gonna be a fan of mine. Okay, okay, but do you know who you, you do you know who you playing with? No, I don't. And I, I, I promise you, when I find you, you gonna know who you playing with. Let me let me let me tell you who I am. Yeah, tell me who you are. Who are you? I am nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Bobby. I'm... <laughs> oh man, yeah. Hey, hey T Rock, you oh. your boy Bobby, y'all, y'all, y'all still getting each other, man. Oh man, I'm I, I nephew, nephew, man. I'm sorry, man. No, you was you was fired up, dog. You alright? I'm sorry. It's it's hot out here anyway, we don't care. We gon we we can take it. I hear okay. you, man. Hey, y'all, oh, y'all, y'all man. tailgating uh, uh, Sunday, man. That's what we do. Everybody pitch in, and we all get together, man. It's, it's a, it's a family thing. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. You good, man? Yeah, you good? Let I'm me sorry. ask you this: What's the baddest radio show in the land, man? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably went a little too far. No, 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 Junior. Always. Junior, finish it for me, Junior. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> huh? Yeah, come on, man. Huh? Yeah, He's yeah, come on, Drew. Was, yeah. was, was I everything y'all, y'all hey, want me to be? Everything plus some. Huh? Huh? Was I not we, injured enough? You injured we, enough. We can't praise you come enough. Come on, give it to me but now. But you know why he like that? Because he don't know nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Huh? Share the call. I don't hear y'all. You were great. You were great. Huh? Give it to me. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah. You were all of that, nephew. Uh-huh. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Center Pitt, you hear this, boy. Come on, now. Yeah. Because I'm stupid. Stupidity come around once a year. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. December 8th, here I go. Come Come on, the boy. explosion. Here the nephew <laughs> coming to town. Yeah. Earthquake ride, man. Uh uh, Dominique. Yeah, we all gonna be all down there. Yeah. What else you got? Uh also, <laughs> December 29th, Houston. Huh? Here I come, Smart Financial Center. 31st, uh-uh. the 31st. <laughs> That's New Year's Eve. New <laughs> Year's Eve, Smart Financial Center. Oh, the 29th, we're in D.C., baby, Constitution Hall. Ha-ha. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Ah, cha-cha-cha. Yeah. Ah, cha-cha-cha. Man, you the greatest. Thank you.
Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Do these pranks. But of all time. But all time. Can't nobody Man. touch me. And I don't see how. No, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm with this to the end. To the end. Yeah. Man. I don't know nothing else. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> hi to the child. Yeah. What is the hi to the child? That's Tommy. That's Tommy. You know, that's what he used to do before anybody smarter than Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tommy uh, and Junior. Coming up next, it is today's Strawberry Letter subject, my girlfriend's husband's baby. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time now, guys, for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationship. What? Huh? What's wrong, Steve? the first letter. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. hold on, we haven't even gotten to it yet. Uh, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, okay, parenting, this. and more, yeah, it's a tough one. Submit your strawberry letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. I believe we are ready. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like this one. Now, I bet yours don't be just like this Ooh, one. I bet you not. Buckle up. You- hold on tight. Here it is, a strawberry letter. Oh, yeah, we we probably, uh, guys, need to do a disclaimer on this letter. Uh, so if your parents with your children in the car, um, you don't want them to hear this, okay? Yeah, I put the kids out right now yeah. and, and stay and, in the car. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to miss it, though. Yeah. Or you does. leave them in there and have to put them in therapy. <laughs> 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 yeah, that. Oh, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. All right, here we go. Subject, my girlfriend's husband's baby. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am a 31-year-old female, and I've been dating a 36-year-old married woman for two years. Recently, she and her husband were having serious financial problems, so I offered to move in with them and help out with the mortgage and the bills. Yeah, yeah. We told uh, her husband that I was just a co-worker that needed a place to live temporarily, and he bought it, so I moved in. When the husband was at work or hanging out on the weekend, me and my girlfriend would be getting it on in their bedroom. After a while, the husband figured out what was going on. One day when he and I were home alone, he confronted me and told me that he knew about me and his wife. He said he was attracted to me too. That's why he agreed to let me move in. So that day, we ended up making sweet love in their bedroom. Now, when it, yeah, 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 I told you it's not yeah. what you think. <laughs> now, whenever my girlfriend is out, I hook up with her husband. I love my girlfriend, but there is nothing like being with a man that puts it down the way he does. Now I see why she doesn't want to leave this man. So here's my problem. Mm. I just found out that I am pregnant by my girlfriend's husband. Sugar, honey, I my girlfriend would freak out if she found out I was having sex with a man. Her husband is secretly excited about the baby, and he thinks we can all live as one big happy family. My ah, man. Ah, That's what he won't go with. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> He just won't go with that. But, <laughs> but that sounds crazy to me. Should I move out and be honest with my girlfriend, or should I give my baby a good home life with a daddy and a second mom? Please advise. What? Or should I give my baby a good home life with a daddy and a, and a second, second mom. mom? Yeah, yeah. So she would just stay there with them, have the baby, be right there with the daddy, and you know, his wife would be her second, the baby's second mom. Uh, why? Oh, why? Just didn't you use protection? I mean, we got to start right there. I mean, were you trying to get pregnant here? I mean, because. What did you think was going to happen when you're having sex with your girlfriend's husband? What do you think is going to happen if, you, if you're doing it unprotected? First, Fall, uh, green. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure you've heard this before, though. Once you start with the lie, then you have to tell another lie, then another lie, then another lie. And now you have an innocent baby on your hands. This is so irresponsible. This is so trifling. All of you are foul for your roles in this mess, but I blame you the most, letter writer, because you were in this just to get what you could get out of it. I don't care if you did say you moved in to help them out with the bills or whatever. You just wanted sex. I mean, that's it. You wanted sex with the wifey. You wanted sex with the husband who puts it down, and you see now why she won't leave this man. This this is a mess, and, and I say you need to leave their home. You have made a mess of everything. You need to fix it. The baby deserves 
the best life you can give her, you and the father can give her. Uh, and yes, someone is going to get hurt, most likely the wife. Uh, the wife is going to have to find out. I'm sorry, because her husband is the father. Uh, you need to woman up. And you got to tell her. You have to tell her because an innocent baby is at stake here. And you don't want anything to happen to this baby. You want this baby to have the best life, like I said, that the baby can possibly have. And because of your mistakes, you know, it, it may not. It may not because of that. Steve? Well, this letter from the very first line. Mm-hmm. I'm a 31-year-old female. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm dating a 36-year-old married female woman mm. for it's two a years. It's a lot. Then her and her husband having some financial troubles. So you decide to move in with them and help out with the mortgage and the bills. You and her got together and told the husband that it was your co-worker and needed a place to stay temporarily. He bought it. You moved in. When the husband at work hanging out on weekend, me and her, we in the bedroom. We getting it on. Mm. Then after a while, the husband figured out what's going on. He come back home. He been playing golf. He come back home. He been down there with the boys on the basketball weekend. He come back on the trip. Ain't nobody upset. <laughs> right. He walk in the door. Hey, I'm here. Mm. <laughs> hey. Mm. What? So you say after a while, he figured it. Now, he ain't just figured when you moved in, his boys asked him, "Damn, dog, you got, the, you got, the, you got, you got two women living in your house. She a friend. She her coworker. What, what y'all got going on? If you think his friends ain't asked him none of these questions, that's why he didn't figure that out. Cause we helped him. That's what friends are for." <laughs> One day he and I was home alone. He confronted me and he told me he knew about me and the wife. He said he was attracted to me too. And that's why he agreed to let me move in. So that day we ended up making sweet love in their bedroom. Mm-hmm. Damn, now when my ever my girl is out, I hook up with her husband. So you just don't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> so you just sitting up in there. That's funny. Just waiting to see who's going to be left. <laughs> That's funny, Steve. Uh, man, to hell with y'all going out of here together. That is funny. Go and live your best life. Go do you. Get yourself some me time so I can get me best. some we time. Oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> now, I hook up with a husband. I love my girlfriend, but there's nothing like being with a man that puts it down the way he does. I've always said that. Now I see why she don't want to leave this man. Here's my problem, and we're going to go to break. I just found out that I'm pregnant with my girlfriend's husband. Is anybody surprised? All right, no. look, hang on, I'm Steve. not. Yeah, we'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 after the hour. Subject, my girlfriend's husband's baby. We'll be back right after this. Wow. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. Subject, my girlfriend's husband's baby. Quickly, let me just get it to you. Woo. These two women as co-workers that's been lovers on their job, one of the chicks is married. The other girl is not. Uh, the married chick and her husband fall on hard times. She offered to move in with them to help out with the bills and everything. They both went to the husband and told him that. He fell for it. She moved in. He thinking they just co-workers till he went out here and ran this situation down to his boys. Now, every time he leave the house, her and the girl in their bedroom getting it on. Now, she say her husband finally figured it out one day and confronted her and said he was attracted to her, too. That's the only reason he let her move in. So he ended up in bedroom, making sweet love. Now, whenever my girlfriend is out, I hook up with her husband. So she hook up with the husband when the girlfriend out and hook up with the girlfriend when the husband out. Her ass don't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> they done worked it out with her where she the only one got a key, so she got to stay home. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Now, everybody thinking it's cool, but she up there, she just over there just wearing her ass out. <laughs> she ain't doing nothing but going to work and having sex. Going to work and having sex. Yeah. She's so damn tired of her job. 
She is considering quitting. <laughs> that ain't in the letter, but her ass is woe out. Right. Uh, now, I see why she don't want to leave this man. So here's my problem. I just found out I'm pregnant by my girlfriend's oh, husband. God. My girlfriend would freak out if she found out if I was having sex with a man. With a man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think that's the part that's going to throw her? Right. That you having sex with a man? Her man is what a girl, her <laughs> husband is secretly excited about the baby. This damn fool. Yeah. He just set up here and landed in this heavenly situation, so he think. And so he's secretly excited about the baby. Is he out of his damn mind? Mm-hmm. See, this thing got so good to him, he think he didn't he didn't hit the jackpot. And he thinks we can all live as one big happy family. Bring it in. Come on. Man. Can't explain this down at the church or nothing. <laughs> church? <laughs> but that sounds crazy to me. That sounds crazy to you. To Moving in doesn't sound crazy. Should I move out and be them and be honest with my girlfriend? Quit saying girlfriend. Because y'all ain't that no more. I can tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. Or should I give my baby a good home? And a life with a daddy in a second month. He didn't convince you that she gonna go for this. Shirley pointed out who she thought was wrong. Let me tell you who I think is wrong. See, when you invite sin in, remember, sin is all in. It don't do boundaries, it don't do electrical, it don't do razor wire good. Sin get in all that. So once you invite sin in, what you want to go wrong? I think the wife is wrong because y'all so-called faked the husband in the beginning, told him y'all was just co-workers. You've been down there screwing around on your husband. What difference do it make is with a woman? If you ain't supposed to sleep outside your marriage, you ain't supposed to sleep outside your marriage. Now you down here with this other woman outside for two years on your husband. Then you bring that same mess outside your house, in your house. Now all this finna get messy. All y'all wrong. You sleeping with somebody under your husband's nose in his own bed. She wrong for bringing her funky behind over there. <laughs> then wears herself in. Now, he wrong and she wrong for sitting up looking at each other one day. Then they start screwing. Now, they done went in there and had a baby. <laughs> now, now you want to be worried about who feelings hurt now. Mm. This is all wrong. He think we could be one happy family. This damn fool. No good in hell. Well, this ain't gonna work. Sitting up in here with your wife and you pregnant, then impregnated her girlfriend who supposed to be a co-worker. Who I'm pretty sure they ain't gonna ever let out that they kicking it. No, so you just fitting to be the dog that slept with the other lady. They ain't gonna put their business out there. But this heifer sleeping with you, that's front and center. Because your wife can't get her pregnant. Nope. This your damn baby. Y'all ain't been sitting up in there arguing. That ain't my baby. <laughs> well, who baby is it? Hey, dog, dog. It's your damn baby. Now, everybody in this letter get just what they got coming. Mm. And whatever happened to the three of them ought to just happen. Ain't no favorites in this letter. How you going to pick your favorite food? What that sound like? <laughs> one more time with that. How one, you like going to pick your favorite food? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, we got four foods running. Which one of these foods? You, we did that with the presidents. <laughs> <laughs> How did that work out for you? This is what happened when you pick a food. Now, all three of y'all done picked each other. He picked her, she picked him, she picked you, you picked her, then he picked you, and then you picked him. Y'all just in there just picking off each other. Now, ain't none of y'all got what y'all thought y'all had. Mm. 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 Ain't none of y'all got what you thought you had. So now, guess what? You're going to have to deal with what you got. Once you make the bed, you got to lay in it. The only person I feel sorry for in this whole story is this child. It's the baby. The baby. Yo, need to be raggedy, raunch behind, sitting up in here. And sitting there. I don't what you, and, and, and let me ask you this here. What, what y'all going to name the baby? Us? <laughs> <laughs> this is us. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know how you name the baby like, after everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, who you going to name the baby? Us? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting up in here, man. Yeah, it's, it's just terrible. damn foolish. Yeah. I was Three damn foolish. people in there, all of them screwing each other. Don't nobody know. But just wilding. I mean, ugh. ooh, I wanted a reenactment from you and Jay. I ain't gonna lie. I <laughs> Sitting up in here, oh, what the hell I'm supposed to say? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we gotta get out of here. Uh, you can email Can't us. Can't introduce or, nobody in that damn house. Instagram us your thoughts on today's letter. This is letter. my husband. This is my wife-in-law. Oh, this is my. Oh. At, I'm the I'm the baby's granddaddy and his. And Steve Harvey <laughs> FM. And his uncle. This is his niece, cousin, mother, and aunt. Comedy roulette coming up in ten minutes. Right after yes. this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, uh, you promised that you had a surprise for us for the strawberry letter. Well, it ain't uh, really no surprise, <laughs> but I really want to focus uh-huh. on uh-huh. one person in this letter in particular. Okay. Uh-huh. And that, that is the woman who was sleeping with <laughs> the married woman for two years who ended up moving into their house uh-huh. and... And the husband didn't know that they had a relationship, so every time the husband would go out, she'd be in there in the bed making sweet love to the woman. Mm -hmm. Then one day the man said he figured out what they was doing, but he attracted her too. So when the woman left the house, Mm -hmm. she was in there making sweet love to the husband. Yeah. Yeah, Now what didn't happen is she didn't wind up getting pregnant, Mm -hmm. and she don't know how to tell it to her girlfriend who is the wife of the husband, and the husband's supposed to be secretly happy because he having a baby. He think they finna be all one big happy family. That was the letter. But my focus in this letter uh-huh. is the woman that moved in with the married people. The wife's girlfriend. With the <laughs> falseness that they was just friends, her and the girl, but they been in there just lighting the room up. Then come to find out, he found out. And so now when she gone, him and her back there doing it. Yeah. And when he gone, her and her back there doing yeah. it. Uh, husband's baby mama. Uh-huh. How tired is she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If she ain't exhausted, she, she done bit off more than she could chew because they keep leaving the house. <laughs> she just sitting on the porch in a rocking chair. <laughs> you leaving now? Oh, yep, I'm going to run over here and holler at my boys, but wink, wink, when I get back, though. <sighs> well, guess I'll go on in here and see what she want. <laughs> <laughs> Is you she what? tired, Steve? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I want. Mm-hmm. Hey, what you been doing, baby? Oh, nothing, me. Me and Cal was in here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what time it is. Tuesday. You know, that's our day, Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, so why don't you come on in here? Well, I would, but I'm tired. No, you ain't that tired. You know what I'm Come on back in here. So now he, the wife, tired. But the one that's really tired is who? That half out on the porch. Uh-huh. Just watching who coming and who going. Letting her know what show she got to put on. Because the two different shows, ain't it? Yeah. It's two yeah. different shows. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Definitely. It's when yeah. she in there with the man, that's one show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She in there with the woman, that's another show. She ever get in there with both of them? That's too much show. Uh, <laughs> that show, that's like a movie that's too long. You ever been to a four-hour movie? Yes, I have. When is this going in? Oh, man. I don't know, man. What y'all think, fellas? Give me some some wow. things that the girl, the tired girl, gonna be saying. I ain't tell you what she said. I ain't tell you exactly what she said. What? What, Jay? She said, "Lord, when both of y'all gonna go someplace? That's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> I need a break." <laughs> she walking around the house. It's Sunday morning, you know. Families go to church. I need y'all to go. She trying to get them out the house. Yeah. I need y'all to get go somewhere break. together. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Applebee's got that new coupon. I cut uh, y'all one out. <laughs> Why don't y'all go see y'all grandparents yeah. or something? Drive yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Just get out the house. Yeah, I do love both of y'all. Bro. I love both of y'all. <laughs>
<laughs> Tilly's got that two for 20. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired and I'm getting confused on what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not confused. Or who I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know what y'all in here doing. And he in here, I don't know what. He, girl, what is you talking about? Why did you invite me over here with all this at your house? Sounded like a good idea when I started, but just in number I hide oh, yeah. Girl, I'm, I'm finna go down there. Work. Girl, I'm going down to unemployment tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just finna have just go on and admit it. I can't yeah. do yeah. this here. <laughs> oh, this too much. Do y'all yeah. ever sleep together? That's mm. <laughs> a question. That's a question. She asked still. Yeah. Do y'all ever hook up? <laughs> the husband and wife. <laughs> yeah. I need a break. Man. Man. What you say, I need I a break. Yeah. I ain't, I can't be that good. Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> they all want me. They all want me. <laughs> say, I can't be that girl. good. <laughs> I can't be that good. All man. of this. <laughs> all of this. They want all of this. She oh, had been that busy, goodness. though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm, she had yeah, worked sleep. Right. Yeah, she right. sleep all at her desk and everything. <laughs> Got to get a day off of uh-huh. Ain't no her head didn't done flip back so hard in that chair with the. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't flip out through her ass out her cubicle. <laughs> yeah, she ain't getting no work done. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, man. Mm-mm. That's a then she walking past her girlfriend at work, blowing kisses out there and winking. Uh-huh. She ain't handling that good no more. Yeah. And the girlfriend going to stop see winking at the house. Over here. Yeah, and the girlfriend gonna see you at the house. I think I'm working late. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she don't want to go home. She don't want to go home. Get that overtime, man. Yeah, then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden. Mm-mm. I'm knocking Where'd on you. Go? Hello? Oh, so you in here working late tonight, huh? <laughs> yeah, oh, thought I'd here? swing through and keep you company. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, uh, I know she at the house by sleep. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) She is one tired lady. She's she's really tired. (laughs) I don't feel sorry for her. No, I don't either. No, I don't feel sorry for her. Don't feel sorry for her. I don't feel sorry for the husband. And I do not feel sorry for the wife. All of them foul as they want to be. And then all of them want to get treated right. Mm. All of them been in there doing each other wrong. Now they want somebody to treat them right. Man, get out of here. And they got a baby. All right. Well, coming up next, uh, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade talked to um, Oprah about the backlash they received uh, when they had this baby. We'll talk about that right after this. For what? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade recently welcomed daughter Kavia James via surrogate. Now they're talking to Oprah Winfrey about that experience, Steve, and the backlash they've received because of it. And an all-news special, uh, Oprah at Home with Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Wade and their new baby is the title. The two reveal that people question why they announced their daughter's birth with Gabrielle resting in a hospital bed. Everyone started talking about why she acted like she had just had a baby, Dwayne said. When Oprah asked her to explain, uh, Gabrielle um, referenced her fertility struggles and added, it's still hard to let go. Kavia is Gabrielle's first child. Uh, Dwayne has three sons and a nephew he's raising, and you can hear all about it when Oprah at Home with Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Wade, and their new baby airs on Saturday night on OWN. Why, why were they mad at Gabrielle? Because, because she, she was in the actually, hospital? Because she and didn't it, actually carry the baby. Yeah. And so when they posted the picture, she was holding the baby as if she uh, delivered yeah. the like baby. But delivered. it's her oh. baby. Yeah. So what? Okay. At least at, like could she it had be? carried the baby and Look, they thought it was deception. You know. No, yeah. I don't know. But could it be that mm. she just wanted to be in the hospital for the birth of her baby? It was, I'm and sure. And she could sit there and she wanted the feeling of someone bringing her a baby? It's Could she baby. have just wanted that feeling? Yes. She wanted to bond with her infant baby at that moment. Yeah. And she has every right. These Absolutely. So she <laughs> could. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm confused. Well, she yes, can't lay in the hospital because she's always dreamed of having a baby presented to her, maybe? 
Well, I know, don't know, but I'm just asking. No, it, it was almost like people thought she was trying to fool them, like she had actually carried the baby and had the delivered baby, the baby, delivered yeah. the baby herself. So they were upset about that. That's what the picture represented to them. You see what I'm saying? So they were mad about that. And then when she was lying down, had the baby on her chest, skin on skin, they got mad about that because it looked like, you know, she had gone through the pregnancy and everything. So I guess people that have gone through pregnancies or whatever, they were upset. And people get mad about everything. Why would you get mad about an innocent baby? So Gabrielle is her mother. Yes. Yes. She, the baby can't lay on her skin. Exactly. I, I'm confused. Not. Exactly. <laughs> not with, not Hold when on, you wait a minute. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't do anything. So ain't no word about these two loving people. Come on. This woman right. struggle with uh, fertility. Fertility issues. Infertility. Yeah. Them fighting through and finally her having yes. the joy of having a baby. Absolutely. Don't nobody just see that, that there's this child that comes into a loving relationship from yeah. two people who really want them. Not if you're a hater, you don't see. What? What? Yeah. Well, how are you seeing that if you're a hater? I wow. mean, really. If you're a hater, you don't see the love. You know what I mean? You don't see all that and all the struggle that they've gone through. You just see. But you know, man, it's just amazing to me how the you haters see the work. negative. So it's hateful. And it's so right. unnecessary. It's an innocent, beautiful baby. See, <laughs> you so busy trying to find what's wrong that you will never get to the what's right. Exactly. And don't you not understand that that transfers into your life. Mm, mm, All mm. haters that I know, real haters, have miserable lives. Yeah. Man. Come yeah. on. Yes, they do. Uh-huh. Yeah. They have yes, miserable they lives. Yeah. I know a few. Well, yeah. You better talk. Yeah. yeah. You better talk. Absolutely they do. Yeah. I mean, man, you first of all, it starts with your life so miserable. You first of all have to create a fake page so you don't want nobody to know it's you. Right, right. Let's exactly. start there. Exactly. It's pride. Mm-hmm. Man, have you ever noticed that? Go on yes. somebody who done said something crazy about you. Oh, yeah. yeah. They all proud because they cowards. You don't have a name. You don't have a name, buddy. They Ooh, cowards, man. man. And they just say stuff. You know, like, you know, it's, it's like this has one thing. I'm just talking about the IG right now. First of all, congratulations to D Wade and yeah, Kathy. Absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations. Baby girl. Go ahead, and, baby. And thank you, D Wade, for loving her enough to want to help make her dreams come true. Because, you know, he could have said, hey, look, I don't want no more kids. We got enough. Right. And thank you God know. for surrogate mothers, too. Yeah. You know, right. yeah. all of that. Step women who can her. have babies. Yeah. Yeah, but then right. that they love each other enough that they wanted to have a child together, mm-hmm. D Wade and Gabrielle. Why? I don't know why people can't see this part of it. But anyway. Haters can't see that, Steve. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, man. We get so much of it. Mm-hmm. You hate that. You hate Yolanda Adams' picture with President Bush. I mean, man. What? What? Oh, you didn't oh, you hear about that. Yeah, you wasn't here yet. You no, here I, yet I, I, I took care of my girl on that. Don't even worry about that. I lit them up. But, you know, it's amazing. I, let me say this to haters, to people who spend their time spread negativity. This negativity that you're spreading, that you're meaning to be so harmful and hateful, there's a penalty for that. And the penalty is paid by you. You don't get to freely go through life messing over people. You don't get to freely skip through life spreading gossip and lies about people. You don't freely get to do that. You may think as you're typing that you're getting away with it and you press sin and you sit back and yeah, they, they they lighten them up. Now, that doesn't work the way you think it works. It really, really doesn't. But it will work and manifest itself in your life for sure. <laughs> See, some of these people you hate known happen to be covered. Some of these people you hate known happen to have a relationship with, with their creator, they God. Some of these people you hate known they live by codes where your hate really don't affect them because they don't even know you exist. All this hating on Gabrielle and, and Dwayne, they still got the baby. But guess what? That hating that you putting out, it has to come back your way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because that's what you put out. That's the radio wave you submit. Don't be tripping when that wave come back to you. Because that's, that's so the true. button you press. That's so true, Steve. Oh, that yes, is so sir. true. That's it's impossible. So true. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, so again, congratulations to Gabrielle Union and to D. Wade. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can hear all about their journey when Oprah at Home with Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Wade, and their new baby airs on Saturday night on OWN. And we'll be back coming up more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. An Aussie woman received the ultimate offer of freedom from her future in-laws, uh, guys. At first, everything was great between this woman and her boyfriend, Jeremy. After about 18 months together, they found themselves pregnant. And after their daughter, uh, after they had their daughter and the guy, Jeremy, proposed. But uh, the woman notes that in a year after their daughter was born, things started to, like, go downhill. You know, they weren't getting along anymore. Then mm-hmm. Jeremy's well-off British family came to visit them. And they weren't exactly happy with uh, Jeremy's choice of a mate either. So Jeremy's dad asked the woman to go for a walk. When they went for a walk, he offered her $20,000 to break up with Jeremy. But she asked for $30,000. And, well, they agreed. She took it. <laughs> the rest is history. What? what? She's what? out of there. She broke up for $30,000. She's she out of there. got off of that price. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Where them Ain't deals that crazy? at? <laughs> <laughs> the hell? Hey, isn't that a that's crazy a story? Oh, sure. It is. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah. Okay, I, now, wh- where was this? In London? No, Australia. Well, Australia. Australia. She's an Aussie <laughs> woman, yeah. Yeah, uh, Australian. <laughs> See, if I don't want you with my daughter, I'm going to take you for a walk, but... Yeah, yeah. Twenty k. She's gonna need thirty. Right Your brand. Right she got up late. She got up real late. Man. You gonna get up out of here without this money though? Mm. What? Man. Oh, you wouldn't even pay her. You just. Oh. No, I ain't talking about if it was the other way around. If it was a man uh-huh. that mm-hmm. I took oh, in yeah. the woods walking. Oh, oh. In the woods. <laughs> you know they went for a walk. Well, they walk in the woods. Well, they didn't say in the here. woods. Well, that's where I want to walk. We going to the woods. That's what I did. He's going to rewrite it. Yeah, yeah we're going to drive down country. here. I'm going to walk in the woods. I'm nice, quiet. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm country boy. No I know witnesses. I know a little bit about the woods. Yeah. You know, you can hear stuff in the woods, and you can't hear stuff in the woods. That's why all the trees fall, and the question came, if a tree falls in the forest, if you ain't there to hear, does it make a noise? That's where that come from. Right, yeah. right. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause mm-hmm. I be doggone, dudes be walking by the next day. Man, that tree on the ground, I ain't even here for. Will it fail? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but you gonna get up away from here. But it ain't gonna be with no thirty thousand. I got some other ways mm-hmm. to get you up away from mine. It ain't gonna be thirty. Why? Well, How much? How much? In this I know. Story. I, it just lets me know that she was just as sick of Jeremy as he was of her. Yeah. 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 They were sick of each K. other. But, but she what made the, an now, extra five on the deal, too. I mean, extra she did. ten. Yeah, extra Jeremy, ten. Extra ten. But Jeremy told his mama and daddy he was sick of her. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's how the daddy came uh-huh. up with the idea. Okay, look, I tell you what, look, this ain't gonna work out. This dumbass boy done got himself in some trouble. Yeah. Let me tell you something right here. Why don't you carry your little low life ass on out of here for twenty thousand? Yeah. You give me thirty, to, but fine. Cool. We, yeah. But here's, here's the deal. Here's a real thing, deal. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Steve. Jeremy is thirty thousand dollars worth of irritation in any damn body. So that's <laughs> right. Well, what about the baby, though? You think the parents took the baby? Oh, they take care of that yeah. baby. That baby's going to be fine. Yeah. That may have been part of the 30, deal. 30000 Damn. Yeah. Would no, you pay thirty to get here. somebody out your life? A hundred dollars. I got a hundred. Well, I done paid way more than that to get one out of my day. Okay, Steve. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah, really, really, right. really. Right. really. Right. Really. Hey, 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 hey. Just got real. Yeah. 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 We're we'll talking about Jeremy and uh, his ex. Hundred damn thousand. Steve Harvey. Where you got them prices at? Three damn times. Bitter man, bitter. All right, sale. listen, guys. We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The Recording Academy has delayed its Grammy nominations announcements from Wednesday until Friday. The switch comes because CBS This Morning will be covering the funeral of President George H.W. Bush. Uh, They'll now be announced. Huh? What are you saying, Steve? I'm sorry. What? Well, you were just asking why. Why? Oh, yeah. oh, and then you yes, go. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. The, the uh, Grammy nominations will now be announced at 8.30 a.m. on Friday, okay? Uh, yes, in, uh, they the might as well push it back. It. Tommy, you, you up for one this year? No, not, not, yeah. not, not this Grammy? year. Jay, you up for one? Yes, I have several. 
Come on, come on, Jay. For your murder the hits. That's right. Hits, baby. You should be, for sure. Yeah. They don't have a prank call category. You know what I want to say? I want to see. You remember the, the rap group that won for Hustle and Flow? Uh, three, <laughs> three, six, six, Mafia. Mafia. Uh, yeah. I would love to see the shape that they Oscar is in. <laughs> I want a picture of where it is and what it looks like. They were like. carrying it around in that paper bag to yeah. parties Getting in and clubs. Stuff. Yeah. That's why I want to see what mm-hmm. they Oscar look like. <laughs> what they do with it, huh? Yeah, where is it? And can I see an actual picture? And where are they, more importantly? Where are they? Mm-mm, don't worry about it. I know where they were. I knew what was going to happen with them. But I need the statue, though. You need to see yeah. this statue. You ain't finna be surprised by where they at. It's right. that damn statue. All right, moving on. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Congratulations to Eddie Murphy. He has welcomed his 10th child into the world. His fiance Paige Butcher, uh, gave birth to their second child together on November 30th. The baby boy, his name is Max Charles Murphy. Oh, he got a... Oh, weighed cool. 6 pounds, 11 ounces, and measured 19 inches long. Eddie's rep says both mother and son are doing well. Max joins big sister Izzy Una. Uh, Eddie's other children are Eric, Bella Zara, Zola Ivy, Shane Audra, Bria, and Miles Mitchell, ranging I'm, in ages I'm gonna tell you from 29 man. to 25. I'm going to tell you something. Eight, uh, 16 to 25. I've been nine. around him a couple of times with his kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That dude right there, man, is an excellent father. Eddie That's Murphy good. is a great father. And you want to know if a father's really good? Listen to the way their children talk about him. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I watched his son talk about his father, man. I said, wow, this is a dude that put some time in because his son was right on point. You know, the ones he had with Nicole, them kids right there, man, them, them some great kids. And the, uh, the other kid, I know, I know all of them. I saw the one, the Izzy, uh, Izzy the, the latest one. Izzy Una? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Just two. Uh-huh. You had a moment, <laughs> just, huh, Steve? Uh, when when you walked in and look what you say. Just what I just said. Hell, I got to go get some more money. <laughs> <laughs> it is unbelievable. I said, I have got to go get yeah. some more money, man. <laughs> in L.A., to have a house like that, it's unbelievable. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm really telling you, man. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful home, man. Beautiful home. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, well, congratulations again to Eddie Murphy, yeah. file number 10. Mm-hmm. And for being a great father, too, man. Yeah, and for being a great father. You know, yeah. look, all our kids make mistakes. We, we, If you got kids, your, mm-hmm. your kids are going to make a mistake. Your kids going to do something to embarrass your ass. Woo. Just and know that. You. And hurt you. And sometimes they're going to hurt you. You're right. All right, coming up, last break of the day and Steve's closing remarks. We'll be back at 49 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, Steve. Last break of the day. It's been a good Tuesday. Nephew's Shirley, back. Yes, Steve. I've got an idea. Okay. My closing remark today, I'd like to do like a business type closing remark. Okay. So like if you all have any questions that I could answer concerning business and businesses or principles of success or anything like that, mm-hmm. that I can share with the people out there today. Oh, okay. So let's take a couple of questions or finance questions or business questions or principal questions. That's my closing remarks today. Anybody? Yeah, I got one. Oh. There was a lady on there who, who had her own hair care product. And the answer that you gave her about, you know, selling part of your business to get investors, which is something a lot of people don't do. I think, you know, on the radio, a lot of radio people would like to hear that. So could you explain that again? Well, you know, this woman was saying that she created this hair business and she thinks it's going good but she doesn't have any money right now to move it forward with advertising and so I said well if you have a young business that looks like it has a potential to do well or you're making sales but you can't get to the new uh to, to the next level I was saying why don't you find someone who might be interested in investing in a business you know you could get family members to join in and invest for a percentage a lot quicker than you can oftentimes from going to a bank. Mm-hmm. Most banks don't loan businesses money until they've been at open for at least two years. That, that's- and that's the troubling part because you got to get to the two-year mark. So I would offer 17% of the company for a price or 
15 percent of the company 12 something like that and, and if you could get a lot of money that would do it for you you can offer you know 25 percent of your business or 33 percent of your business wow that's always a smarter way to try it but most people try to hang on to that company so they can say they own it you end up owning a lot of nothing this is like Shark Tank, Steve. I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna ask you, how do you mm-hmm. find investors? But I think you kind of answered it. Well, when you, you said know, you go gotta kind of put it out there first. You gotta uh-huh. give me a GoFundMe page, then put your stuff up, let people know about it. It mm-hmm. could be an investor that you don't know, but a lot of you, some of you, have uncles and aunts that are a little bit more successful than your immediate Hello. family. Mm-hmm. Have you shared with them <laughs> your ideas and things like that? <laughs> Listen to your nephew. <laughs> oh. I got that. I got well, with everybody. Well, well. Uh-huh. I got one. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Tommy. Thank you, no, no, Steve. I'm just saying for that. I got one. Oh, you got a rich I do uncle. have one. I do have one. Uh-huh. Uncle. So I have this I have this idea about an app. Um is 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 app something I can really make money off of? Well, successful yeah. apps are huge and you don't have to do a lot. Uh Harvey's right. Hundreds is one of the uh really, really good new apps of the year. Came out last week of September. I've got over 300,000 uh, apps out there now playing Harvey's Hundreds. And, uh, oh, wow. Huh. Yeah, what, man. What's, what's my first step? You have an idea, and you, you, you know, you're scared to tell somebody because you don't want anybody to take your idea. What's my first step when you have a, a, an well, idea? Well, you got like to get it to an app store, a developer. You got to get to a developer, someone who develops apps, and you got to cut the deal with them. You know, uh, you could, do you have money to pay them for it, to flush it out, to practice on it, to make it work? You know, do you cut a deal with an app company that says, hey, let's do this app together? Here's my idea. If you all do all the work and the putting behind it, I'll be your partner in it. You know, 70-30 or something like that, 60-40. You know, but you got to get a developer first. Okay. That's what I did. First step. First step. Mm. Right. Yeah. I have a company you can go to. I need that. I That's do. done. Does, Seriously need that. Does it depend on the business, Steve, that you want to start? How much money you need to have initially to start the business with? Well, listen to me. Most businesses can be started with zero money. Mm. Most businesses okay. can be started with zero money. How you got to start yourself. Most people that come up with business ideas mm-hmm. uh-huh. is something that you can do yourself. I mean, what better way to start? It's hard to start a business for somebody else and go, hey, look, I thought of this for you. You always think of a business for yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh So immediately, if you think this business is a good idea, it probably has something to do with something you can do that can generate money. Mm -hmm. That's usually the case. You know, Apple isn't being invented every day. Cisco's aren't being invented every day. But your idea can be invented different ways. I don't care if it's selling T-shirts online your your business idea has been done before some way, shape, form, or fashion. Mm-hmm. So get to doing what you can do to turn some money. I, don't, don't stop thinking ideas where if you need everybody else to do something in order for you to make money, uh-huh. All right. All right. you're gonna be uh-huh. waiting a long okay. time. You've got mm-hmm. to do something where you could generate the money. That's the first place it starts. Yeah, but and, then and you got to put a, a real doggish effort with it. And you could turn it into some real money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody does something where they can make ten dollars. So, Steve, maybe you can speak on fear. Fear holding people back. What can you say to people? Well, that are you know, afraid? fear is the number one cause of failure in the country today. Fear is the number one cause of failure because mm-hmm. fear freezes you from even starting. And if you don't start, you have failed. The failure begins in the fear of it. You've got to overcome your fear. But this is what I did. I made all my dreams bigger than my fears. I dreamed so big, I wanted so much, so incredible, that all of my dreams are bigger than my fears. So I got a reason to face my fear. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 